Hello, Internet. Welcome back to the Experimental Cataclysm. If you're new here, this is the show where we discuss changes that have come to the experimental version of Cataclysm over the last couple of weeks. Nice, short show this week. Not a whole lot that I want to talk about. you got to understand as well that we are moving towards 0.f, so a lot of the features and things that would normally be coming down the pipeline are on hold until after 0.f. So there's not been a ton of content stuff for us to talk about. I do primarily discuss content, not so much the bug fixes and all the other work that they're doing, but that, of course, does not mean that they are not working. It just means there's not a lot of content. So first, I wanted to mention, again, proficiencies, just because they keep coming up. More and more proficiencies are being added. This is not the only PR related to proficiencies they are being worked on. Um, not much really to say about it. Unfortunately, proficiencies are something that I have not had a lot of experience with. I've not been able to play with proficiencies at length. I've been uh, kind of on hiatus and, and other people have been playing a lot more than I have uh, over the last couple of weeks, months, what, what have you. Um, proficiencies. Someone did ask me, like, what do you think of proficiencies? I don't know if we ever talked about it. I think it's good. I think people are really frustrated. Basically, I think that people in, especially in the Cataclysm community, look, we're very, we're a very aggressive community. We really like what we like. We really hate what we hate. And we're very vocal about it. So I've seen a lot of negative pushback with proficiencies because people are frustrated. Oh, it takes 3,000 times as long as it used to take. I think it's just an adjustment period um, that people need to get used to. And I really like proficiencies conceptually because like previously, let's say um, I have a character who picks up a couple books and reads until he gets fabrication level nine, let's say. So he's basically just read books and learned this skill. And then he could go out and craft a war hammer like it was nothing. I like proficiencies because they separate crafting from knowledge so like the skill itself you might learn book smarts all the way up to fabrication level nine but that doesn't mean you have the practical knowledge required to craft a warhammer that would require time and practice i also like that it will make us less of a jack of all trades because over time you will have to kind of prioritize which proficiencies are most important to you you can't just be a character who does everything i mean you could it would just take you a really long time to get to that point so I, I really like proficiencies. I know it's been frustrating for a lot of people. It's always hard to tell when it's actually affecting everyone and everyone is upset, or is it just a minority of people who don't like something but are very vocal about being upset? So it's always kind of hard to tell where people land with it. I like them. I just haven't played with them enough to to really have a hugely refined opinion on their current implementation. But yeah, I had someone ask me about proficiencies. I think they're a good idea. And I know Irk, and I think originally it was another simulacrum. Mostly I've been seeing stuff from Irk. But, you know, people have been working on it and they're being refined. I know there was another PR where they went back to some of the original. In fact, that's this one, isn't it? Older proficiencies. They went back to these original proficiencies that were just implemented kind of as a proof of concept and they're refining them and bringing them up to what they are more like now because the older ones, it's already been an evolution. The newer proficiencies had more expansion, like they were expanded more than the original implementation. So they're bringing the old ones up to snuff, which means that there's been a clear progression in how they're implemented because they're, they needed to go back and, and refine those old ones. But anyway, I think we've talked about this enough. More proficiencies coming to the game basically all the time. I think we talked in the last episode about tailoring proficiencies. You're going to see them more and more. Um, and they seem to be something that they're really trying to flesh out for 0.f. So, yeah, get used to it. Um, I do think that it's an adjustment period. But I think once people get used to it, I think the proficiencies are good. And and I uh, look forward to, to getting better at them and, and getting more familiar with them and, and kind of learning to prioritize which ones to prioritize, which ones aren't that important. Like, I, I just, I like that idea that you actually have to choose a path for your character. Okay, yes, I could spend the next, you know, three weeks learning to be a master tailor, but how practical is that really compared to something like bladesmithing or whatever? Those things are going to have different priorities to different characters. I like that it fleshes out. I mean, I just like it. I know people have been pushing back, but I like them. So anyway, that's enough of that. Next, from NB Bloodhound. Was this your first PR? It was. 
So I saw this individual, I don't know what their name is on Discord, but they asked on Discord how to do this, and I thought it was a, a nifty little idea, and I thought I would shout it out because it was their first PR. So basically, Fire Axes now have a pocket that can fit a Halligan tool. This is based on uh, real world. Did they put a screenshot? No. So in the real world, apparently, lots of people have it so that a Fire Axe and a Halligan tool kind of nest together into one single item. And they wanted to add that to the game. They asked for some advice, like, how do I implement this? Uh, and ultimately, they went with giving it a pocket. There was some talk about making, like, a, uh, a clip or something like that, that that could do it. But currently, if you have a fire axe, there's now a pocket on the fire axe. Is it literally just a halogen tool? It probably is. It is. So if you have a fire axe, you will be able to place a halogen tool in its pocket and kind of can make them into one item for transportation purposes and, and just more ease of handling. So I think this is pretty cool, pretty simple, but, um, you know, I try to shout out people when they have a, a first PR, especially if it's like this person literally asked me, Oh, how would you do it? So I, I actually interacted with this person and thought, you know, why not shout people out? And, and, you know, I don't know. Contributing to cataclysm is something that basically anyone can do. It's just that most people don't bother. So, I feel like you should get a little recognition when you finally do actually contribute to the game, but I don't know. Anyway, it's a cool little thing. thought I would mention it. Um, I don't know how many people necessarily this is going to apply to. I, I generally don't carry a fire axe or a halogen tool, um, but I know a halogen tool is something that a lot of people really like. And yes, I call it a halogen tool. I know a lot of people say bar. It is just, just don't hate me. Um, but this is something that I do think some people will get value out of. And I just thought, you know, cute, cool, cool little thing, cool little thing worth mentioning. Next, from Mail Clips, we have uh, making mute a player trait. So the way I understand is that um, mute was implemented for NPC purposes, which just uh, prevented. Actually, I don't know. Does it say anything? Uh, Magicalism. I created an aura that changes the player's form to that of a werewolf, but they could not interact with other NPCs while they were changed. Okay, that makes sense. However, Mute currently only impacted NPCs that had the trait. Um, and so now this has been made so that players can actually have the Mute trait. I think this is cool. Um, I, you know, as a writer, I've had Mute characters before. I, I've always had kind of a weird connection with people who don't speak, um, which is actually, now that I say it out loud, sounds really weird. And I don't have time in this episode to explain to you why that is, but... Yeah, I think it's cool that Mute was added as a player trait or is being added to a player trait. Looks like they weren't able to test, but if it got merged, it probably was tested and whatnot. So, yeah, presumably you can now have Mute player characters, which is pretty cool in my opinion. And since NPCs aren't super vi valuable in Cataclysm, or not, not, not that they're not valuable, they're not super necessary. You can play a game without NPCs. This is just you know, for some people will be a free point or however many points for some people, it will be a fun role-playing mechanic. For some people, it will just be, it's going to make the game more challenging because maybe we can't trade or, or recruit NPCs. I think it's really cool. Um, and it's pretty rare that we see very many new traits, uh, or even just refining of old traits. There's something that is a little less common. So I think it's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just always liked mute, mute characters. I have a lot of mute characters in my writing. I've always liked... Oh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, next from Boone... Okay, uh, from Boone, we'll say, uh, adds ASCII art for guns. Again, I think this per I think I spoke to this person on Discord um, as they were trying to do... They want to do more ASCII art, um, and they're trying to organize things in the files and whatnot to make that a little bit more easily done, but... We've all seen the ASCII art, only some items in the game. If you scroll down in the items description at the bottom, there's generally a little ASCII art depiction. The only one I can think of off the top of my head is glass jars, I want to say. Glass bottles, maybe. Um, but ASCII, it's just a little picture. I don't know. I don't have any screenshots, and I don't really want to open the game just to show you ASCII art. But I think it has some value. I think it's a cool little thing that I would never have thought of, but I think it's cute and, and interesting. And they've added some ASCII art for guns, and presumably there's going to be more in the future. If it wasn't this person that I was talking to, then there is a second person who's also looking to contribute ASCII art. But either way, look for more of this in the future, I think. Um, and I can't really think of guns off the top of my head that got it. 
So I'll show you the file here, but um, you're not going to be able to tell really just by looking at this. It's really something you would need to see in game to really fully kind of get the idea. But you can see some vague uh, aspects. It just depends on whether the color changes inside of the item or not. Um, and these are the old ones. This is not what was added, I think. This is the full file. So like the glass bottle, like I mentioned. So there are some guns now that will have um, ASCII art attached to them. I think it's cool. I don't think it's like strictly necessary or anything like that, but I think it's cool. Sometimes I flip down to the bottom of a, you know, first aid kit and there's a little picture of a first aid kit. I think it's cute. Um, in fact, there is the first aid kit. I don't know. What do you think? You know, leave me a comment. How do you feel about ASCII art? Do that YouTuber thing where I encourage you to leave me comments so that I can get better bumped up in the algorithm. So it looks like quite a few guns actually got them added, like the M4, the Mini-14, the SCAR. Um, so yeah, quite a few guns, actually. I thought this was a smaller PR than it is. So um, yeah, look for next time you pick up a gun, have a look. See if you have ASCII art at the bottom. Next, from Xenomorph, we have the removal of antiseptic from an IFAC. So IFAC stands for Individual First Aid Kit. Um, they're basically just... Um, like, I don't know how standard issue they are, but they're for the military. They generally contain, like, bare bones type stuff, a tourniquet, some bandages, things like that. They don't really, they don't have antiseptic in them. Um, I think they changed IFAX a, a while back, and they are different now. But, like, in the real world, they changed uh, what they had inside of them. But I don't think antiseptic was ever one of the things that they had so it never really made sense to have antiseptic in the ifac i like the introduction of additional first aid kits that have been coming to the game but it didn't make sense that they had antiseptic so uh xenomorph here removed antiseptic from the ifac spawn um i don't know what all they have looks like medical tape a tourniquet quick clot powder bandages and gauze as well as some scissors and medical gloves do they contain medical gloves? They probably do, right? They probably do. I don't know. Um, but presumably this person probably looked up what is in a standard IFAC and then made the changes based on that. So, yeah, no more antiseptic. Just thought I'd mention it because um, antiseptic is pretty crucial in the early game and uh, IFACs are not a good place to get them. Next, we have the beginning implementations of venom glands. And... I don't know what to make of this. Essentially, this adds venom glands to bees and wasps. And the idea here is to be able to harvest that venom over time um, and actually use that for crafting or, or for value in the game, presumably as part of chemistry. I don't know. Awful category, harvestable with a short shelf life, can be refined into concentrated venom. Yeah, I don't know what the ultimate goal is um, for that. Like, I don't know what I need Venom for. I don't know if that's going to be poison weapons, that kind of thing, or if it's going to be for chemistry, um, more chemistry recipes that are being implemented and whatnot. But this person began implementing Venom glands, and this is something that comes up kind of a lot. I, it's something I've seen. I mean, I've been part of the Cataclysm community for several years at this point, it comes up kind of a lot. People talk about and uh, venom glands. People talk about acid sacks. People talk about, like, you know, harvest. Oh, I want to harvest from acid ants. I want to be able to harvest their actual acid and then convert that to something valuable in the game. See that come up with venom glands. We've had that come up with other, like, organ-type situations before. So it's interesting to see that this is starting to be implemented. I'm curious where it will go and what value it will bring. Because, like, I'm thinking about it from the way I play the game currently can't really think of any reason I would ever need Venom. Um, it would be interesting if that became part of a requirement for certain mutagen crafting. I don't know how much mutagen crafting... Will, I don't know what the future of crafting mutagen looks like. Uh, I don't see what... Uh, but, you know, it's just something that's worth keeping an eye on uh, like i'm interested to see where it goes i don't know how you feel about it i can't really think of why i would ever need venom acid seems more practical for me because acid actually can be used in a lot of crafting things or some crafting can't really think of anything that i would necessarily need venom for but it's interesting you know and if you really think about it isn't there aren't does don't certain venoms have antiseptic not antiseptic uh and a 
anesthetic properties. Like, doesn't... I don't know. I feel like an idiot now, but I kind of think that Venom is, like, actually pretty complicated, and I think that there would be... Probably would be chemistry applications for it. And isn't aren't there anesthetic properties to certain Venom? Like, if I get bit by... I don't know what, I don't see venom is such a, I'm not familiar with the exact definition of venom, but I know that lots of creatures, you know what? I don't know. And the more I talk about it, the dumber I'm going to sound. I'm curious where this will go. And I just wanted to mention it because this is part one. So presumably there are more parts to come where it will get kind of refined and find uh, and show where its value actually lies. But I'm curious uh, auto injector recipes refined for adrenaline. I mean, that's a separate type clan situation, right? Anyway, I just feel like an idiot. So I'm going to link the, the, this in the description down below. Obviously, I always link everything in the description down below. Check it out if you want. I'm not going to sit here and read, you know, multiple paragraphs about something I just wanted to give a cursory glance to and relay to you guys. Um, but definitely check it out if you're interested. I'm curious where all this will go. And probably if I read the PR and did some research like a professional, I would probably know where it's going. But we're just going to move on. So everybody, yes, thanks. Uh, so Venom Glands implemented. And next is the final thing and probably the most visible thing, of course, over the last couple of weeks. Just wanted to mention it. Lots of skills have been renamed in the game. Several of them have been merged. This one specifically references trapping and lockpicking being merged into a devices skill. I um, I was actually against merging lockpicking and trapping because I do think that lockpicking is... Like, I have done some lockpicking. Lockpicking is a very different skill from understanding the mechanism behind building traps. But since, like, trapping would become a proficiency to represent your mechanical understanding of building a trap kind of makes sense where like the skill is just the governing thing and and the proficiency determines your actual like mechanical understanding and crafting those type things so i don't hate it but like I, I did not i was not a huge fan of those being merged but lots of them got renamed you know first aid got renamed uh, healthcare or something like that um and you've probably noticed that lots of your skills have been renamed i don't know if we can quickly find a list if i pulled up any episode um, so here I've just pulled up an episode from one of my stream series, and here we can see some of the skills that have been renamed. So um, chemistry has been renamed applied science, I think. Cooking is now food handling. Um, we discussed the devices skill. This is actually, it looks like it was before trapping and lockpicking got merged. Um, but many of the skills have been renamed. Some of the stuff has been shuffled around. But the skills have been renamed. This is less of a you know, hey, look at this PR. It's more just like, that's what happened, just because I know some of you will see the skill changes and be confused. They've just been renamed. Most of them are exactly the same as they used to be. You know, it being renamed Applied Science does not change the fact that it's still the chemistry skill. Some of this is just because the names were a little bit misleading. So, for instance, Cooking has been renamed to Food Handling, and this is to represent that it's not just Cooking, this includes things like, uh, I think brewing is one of those things. And it's like, you know, if you have a cooking skill and you start brewing, you might be a little confused and say, okay, well, why does brewing raise cooking? It's not really cooking, so on and so forth. Same with chemistry. Um, it's probably going to be more than just chemistry, uh, and that's why that has been merged. So I just wanted to shout this out because I'm sure some of you have noticed it. Um really not a lot to report just wanted to to point it out and explain why that happened and then like i said um trapping and lock picking have been merged into a new devices skill and again this is what we discussed a little earlier with proficiencies so i was against lock picking and trapping being merged because trapping was like required for crafting traps and your ability to pick a lock is more like dexterous and kind of experience um so like I do a little bit of lock picking. I picked it up pretty easily, apparently. Um, and once you understand like the mechanics of what's inside a lock, it actually just becomes kind of a skill thing and kind of like knowing 
just learning the feeling, right? It's just muscle memory and kind of learning what it feels like when you get the pin in the right spot and when it's a false set and things like that. So that really has nothing to do with crafting a trap. So I was initially against this because just because I understand how to pick a lock, that doesn't mean I'm capable of putting together like a bear trap because that mechanism and actually building that mechanism is something I would not understand how to do just because I can pick a padlock. So I didn't like that originally, but with proficiencies, it kind of makes sense because it becomes a skill that governs your like understanding of devices. And then we would actually have a separate proficiency for trap making itself. So even if you were good at lock picking, you would begin to understand more and more about mechanisms, which would increase your device skill, but it would not help you to learn how to craft a bear trap, for instance, because a bear trap would require probably some kind of trapping proficiency and actual hands-on knowledge of how that particular mechanism works and your ability to craft that yourself. Hopefully that makes sense. I know that probably sounded a little confusing, but I was originally against this and I actually don't think it's a bad change at all. The renaming of the skills also I don't think is a big deal. Um, I know some people hate change. When I first saw this, I was like, what am I looking at? Um, but then once you look at it a little more closely, it really is very similar to what it was before. Most of them are just renamed because the categories that they oversee are more than just what they were named previously. So cooking, food handling, governs brewery, even though brewing has very little to do with your ability to make a grilled cheese sandwich, for instance. So many of the skills have been renamed or changed somewhat. Uh, we're seeing more proficiencies that will make that delineation of between skill and practical knowledge, I think, in the future. And yeah, man, this every time I record one of these episodes, I feel like I end up rambling in a nonsensical way. But regardless, skills have been renamed, everybody. That's, uh, that's going to be a wrap for this episode. Hopefully that all was helpful or informative at the very least. Hopefully it didn't come across like too much of an idiot. And uh, that's going to do it for this episode. So everybody, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. I will be back in a couple weeks with another update video. Um, unless 0.f magically gets, uh, we go into content freeze and all that stuff. Uh, we'll see how, how that goes. But for now, that's a wrap. Thanks for being here. I'll see you next time.